Well, hello there, and welcome to yet another episode of the show. My name is Mark Risen Hopkins. Thank you for joining me. Uh, the reason why I'm coming to you today is we've got a story of heart wrench, heartbreak, and uh, you know just just all around uh, destitution for these robots. And apparently, it seems to be a problem limited to overseas, not here in America. But robots, and, and I'm, I'm rolling a clip right now. You're watching. This was from Christmas time. A holiday robot who goes by the name of what was this one? A H D one six eight. Uh, he uh, he needed our help around the holiday season, trying to find a job. He was created for a certain purpose. The client didn't pay, and suddenly, yeah, okay, this is somewhat tongue in cheek. Yes, you, you, I'm sure you get that at this point. Anyway, the reason why I'm bringing this this guy up is because of this story here from Gizmodo. Let me show you. Uh, the uh, this robo bum begs where the homeless fear to tread. The uh, the story it seems to be that now this 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 fictional homeless robot is actually a reality. They've created these robots, these beggar robots that real life beggars can then rent out and apparently average about seven dollars an hour off of these things. Pretty interesting. So check it out. Uh, I'll roll the clip. And thanks for joining me. Take it easy. The Beggar Robot 1.0 was first tested in 2006 in the biggest shopping area in Slovenia, where authorities don't allow begging inside the shopping centers. After the crush of socialism in the 90s, big shopping centers appeared on the outskirts of the cities. At the same time, many people were automatically excluded from the shopping society, mostly poor and people living on the edge of the poverty. A machine made of spare parts and junk electronics that successfully begs for money would be a tactical solution, a weapon against exclusion for many materially deprived and socially excluded. Although authorities in the shopping centers don't allow humans to beg, they let the robot in for several days. The strategy turned out to be successful. The robot was allowed to beg inside the shopping centers on many occasions. The hypothesis is that this part of society is only able to show some sympathy towards the marginalized if they communicate from a safe distance and via a technological interface. In 2007, the homeless could rent the robot for a day. project tests and exploits the advantages of robotic interface by bringing the robot to public spaces in different countries and adapting it to the local context and local language. Since the police is pushing homeless out of town in the last few years, there are not many beggars around in Taipei. At least not in the city center. But you can see them in front of temples and oh, poor parts of the city. In this real situation, people could choose between machine and human beggar. They would both, equally earning money, for about two hours. Then, situation drastically changed. The robot was allowed to stay. continued begging all over the city in next days. Mm -hmm. 
Tokyo, the world's gadget capital, and one of the most advanced cities in the world, was a place where the most sophisticated version of the robot was tested. On Tokyo streets, there are a lot of homeless people, but still, begging isn't really a frequent phenomena. In fact, you can hardly see any beggars. Because of the cultural difference and unknown begging phenomena, the people are not used to give money to the person on the street. But they love robots. Because of the software and additional sensor inside, this version detected money and said thanks after receiving money. <laughs> this function turned out to be of crucial importance. People didn't give money to the robot as a substitute for a human, but rather gave the money to see what would happen. They played with the robot like with a gadget. ロケーションスナックスクリプトにメモられない人に利益を与えられるかどうか私は確かめたいのです。無料のハードウェアとソフトウェアで作られています。あなたも電子機器のゴミ捨て場でただで拾ったりリサイクルショップで安く買えるもの